In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called best time to buy and sell stock with cooldown. Uh, so you're given an array of prices where prices I is the price of a given stock on I today. So find the maximum profit you can achieve. You might complete as many transactions you would like, buy one and sell one share of the stock multiple times with the following restriction. So after you sell your stock, you cannot buy the stock on the same day uh, but you have to do a cool down day for one day, right? Before you buy a stock. So basically you can see you, you might not engage in multiple transactions simultaneously. You might not, you must sell the stock before you buy again. So you can see here, uh, we have an example of prices, right? So for this prices, uh, in this case, you can see we're starting to buy at index zero, right? Day one, we buy one and then we can sell it here, right? In this case, we'll get a profit of one, right? And then what we can do is that we have to take a cooldown day, right? In this case, the next day is a cooldown, and I'll buy at here, right? In this case, you can see I'll buy at this position or at this day, and I'll sell it the ne next day. And then you can see here we get a profit of two. So two plus one will give us three. So that's why you can see the maximum profit that we can earn, um, you know, performing these operations or performing following these restrictions is gonna be three, right? So you can see we can also have another example of if there's only one, and uh, in this case, we, uh, we will give us zero, right? Because in this case, we can buy one, but we cannot sell on the same days, right? You, you can see here, after you sell, uh, in this case, you, you can, so you have to buy one and sell one multiple times with the following restriction. Even though you sell at the same day, the profit is still gonna give us zero, right? So in this case, to solve this problem, let's take a look at the constraints first. So in the constraints, you can see here, we're guaranteed to have positive values and uh, the length of the array is between one to 5,000. So in this case, to solve this problem, uh, what we can do is that, well, the brute force approach to solve this problem is basically trying with all the combination, right? So let's say we have this array right here and what's gonna happen is that we're starting to maybe like buy at this position and then we basically try to iterate each of the remaining elements to see okay if i were to buy at day one and i sell it here what's the maximum profit right and then in this case to find out what's the maximum profit in this case is basically two minus one which is one plus if we have to you know wait for another uh, day to cool down and then we're going to start to uh, you know, see what's the maximum profit if we were to start buying at this position, right? So in this case, we are doing a DFS, uh, basically saying, hey, I want to know what's the maximum profit if we were to start buying it here. And when I say start buying it here, I does, it doesn't mean that I can buy it here. I can also, let's say this value right here is a crazy big value, right? And then we have zero right here. And I can also start buying like here, you know, I can also start buying it here, right? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't, like when I say buy net here, it doesn't mean that I have to like find the maximum profit if I were to buy the stock today, right? At this day, I can, I want to know like what's the maximum profit if we were to start buying at day, at this current day, right? Maybe it will be like day two, day three, or day four, or so on and so forth, right? So basically, we want to find what's, if I were to start at this position, right? What's the maximum profit that I can earn? right if we were to start buying at this position right i can also start buying at two right day two right i can start buying it here right so that's what we're trying to do right we're, we're basically doing like a brute force approach which in this case you can see for each and every single element right if i were to buy here i will i, I want to figure out where where can i sell i can sell it here and then i have to do what df has to say okay if I were to start buying it here, what's the maximum profit, right? And then I backtrack and then I say, if I were to start buying it here, then I have to, or sorry, in this case, if I want to sell it here, then in this case, I will have to start, I will have to find what's the maximum profit if I were to start buying at here, right? And then if I were to start to sell it here, which is not possible because zero minus one is not a, is not a positive value, right? And then what if I sell it here? I sell it here, then I wanna know what's the maximum profit if I were to, uh, you know, start buying that here, right? Which is out of bounds, so it's gonna be zero. So in this case, you can see like the brute force approach to solve this problem is basically gonna try with each and every single combination, right? Like for each and every single elements, I have a number of branches, or in this case, an, yeah, a number of paths that I can go down to. And for each of those paths, I also have a number of paths that I can go down to, right? I can. Right, you can see here, I can, uh, if I were to buy 
let's say if we were to go back to here, right? In this case, I can start here, right? I can, I can uh, figure out, you know, if I were to sell here, I can try to buy. What's the maximum profit if I were to buy here? And what's the maximum profit if I were to buy here, right? And not only that, you can see I also want to say, let's say if there's a situation where this value right here is one ten, right? It's really large. I want to know what's the maximum profit if I want to buy here as well as I want to know what's the maximum profit if I were to start buying here, right? So basically that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to, in this case, trying to explore all the options using this brute force approach, right? But that's brute force approach. And you can see that there will be a lot of uh, duplicate computation because you can see here, if I want to know, you know, what's the maximum profit if I were to buy here, but you can see when we're at here, we already compute that when we do the DFS, right? So that's why we can be able to use like a top-down approach to solve this problem. But if we were to implement the top-down approach to solve this problem, uh, you can see it will give us a time limit, uh, limit exceeded because of the recursion stack. So let me walk you through this still because this is very, very important. Uh, you can see here, we starting at the max profit, right? We take the prices and then we say n is equal to prices.length, right? And then what we do is that we are basically creating this cache integer array, and then we're basically trying to call this DFS function. And this DFS function basically answers, uh, you know, if I want to, what's the maximum profit if I want to start buying at this position, right? That's what we're trying to do. If we, when we call this DFS function, we want to know what's the maximum profit if we were to start buying at this position. So what we're going to do then is in our DFS, we basically check to see if index is greater than n, then we can just return zero. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to see if cache at index is already cached. If it's already cached, we can basically return that cache value, right? And then otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate. Okay, so we iterate. So in this case, when we say start buying at the index, right, it doesn't have to be like, oh, uh, oh, let's buy at this position and see what's the maximum profit. We all, we can also buy at the next day. We can also buy at the next next day, right? So that's what we're doing at this loop right here. This outer loop is basically saying, let's say we buy at this index. Let's say we buy at this index. Let's say we buy at index two, index three, right? Let's figure out what's the maximum profit if we were to, you know, uh, start buying at this day. So in this case, you can see we can also start selling, right? So we can also check to see, okay, if I were to sell at this day, if I were to sell at this day, right, what's the maximum profit that we can get? And first, like I said before, we have to check to see if the buy price is bigger than the sell price, then we can continue, right? We don't have to do the we don't have to do this comparison here, and we don't have to do the DFS function uh, because in this case the buy price is bigger than the selling price, right? If that's the case, that will give us a negative value. We don't want that, right? So in this case, you can see if it if it doesn't qualify, then we're gonna calculate what's the maximum profit, right? If we were start, right, selling at this position, right? If we were sell at this position, what's the maximum profit, right? What's the maximum profit if we were to buy at this position? That's what we're trying to do for the max variable here. So you can see max is equal to either max or if we were to get the you know the price difference plus the DFS function uh, two plus sell right basically we, what we the sell is basically the index right like this index where we want to sell and then plus two basically means that we want to have one day of cooldown and then we're starting at the day after the cooldown right so that's basically the next start date. we want to find what's the maximum profit if we were to start at that date and then at the end you can see we're basically caching that value and you can see cash at index is equal to max uh, value between either max or cash at index Right. What does it do is that uh, it basically is saying, OK, for this position, right, uh, either I'm going to buy at, you know, the first day one or I buy at day two. It, it doesn't matter. Right. We're starting at buying at index right at this index right here. We start buying at this position at this day. What's the maximum profit that I can that I can get at this or if we are if I were to start buying at this date. Right. So that's what we're trying to calculate. Right? And at the end, we're going to return. This is the maximum profit that I get if I were to start buying at this day, right? So that's what will give us, uh, you know, close to n squared time complexity. And there's also like a recursion stacks, which, uh, you know, affects the, 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 the performance. And let's take a look at the uh, the top down or the, the uh, bottom up approach, right? The bottom up approach is a lot easier. Um, 
or I, sh I shouldn't say a lot easier, but like the code is a lot smaller, right? And then you can see I document these by comments, so it's a lot easier to read. So what's going to happen here is basically we're starting at the second last element in the array and we're working our way up, right? We're working our way towards the first element in the array. And for each and every single element in this max profit buy start at, right, is basically trying to answer like for, in this case, let's say index two or index three, right? What's the maximum, what's the maximum profit if I buy starting at index three? Or what's the maximum profit if I by starting at index two, right? That's what that's what the uh, this cache array trying to trying to uh, store, right? So that's why we're starting at the second second last element because the first element, right? The maximum profit that you can buy is basically zero, right? Starting at this position is zero. Okay. So what's going to happen then is that for each and every single iteration, right? First, we want to find what's the max profit if I buy at this position, right? If, so let's say, for example, this one, this one, this last second last element right here, what's the maximum profit if I buy at this position? In this case, if I buy at this position, um, is you know we have to iterate all the sell point, right? In this case, it's going to be buy plus one to to n, right? We want to iterate all the uh, right subarrays to figure out, okay, if I sell here, what's the maximum profit? If I sell here, what's the maximum profit, right? If I sell, so on and so forth, right? Let, let's say the start is two, I will iterate three, zero, two, trying to figure out what's the maximum profit if I were to sell at this position, right? Each and every single position. And that's what we're doing the calculation here. So profit is equal to prices sell minus prices buy. And then uh, we check to see if we can be able to continue to to, to buy after the uh, the cooldown, right? Because in this case, the cooldown is takes one day. So in this case, we already cashed that before, right? Like what's the maximum profit uh, buy starting at after this, the cooldown? That's what, what line 12 is doing right here. And then once I get the profit, if I buy at this position, um, right? Buy and sell at this position, right? And then I will try to compare that. What's the maximum profit? Uh, what's the maximum profit buy starting at buy right if i were to start at this position or in this case uh day two right what's the maximum profit if i buy and sell at this position right and i will make make sure that i will get the maximum profit right if i buy this if i buy today what's the maximum profit if i can what's the maximum profit uh if i sell here and here and here right after that this is the key part of the code is that if after I get the maximum profit, if I buy at the current position, right, I need to know what's the maximum profit if I start buying at this current position. There's a difference. One is a start buying and one is buy at this position, right? Start buying basically means that if what's the maximum profit if I were to start buying at this position? Maybe I don't have to starting or start buying at the current day, right? I can buy at the next day. I can buy at the next next day, right? Like it depends on the current value, right? If the current value is really, really large, for example, 100, 1000, right? So maybe maybe we don't want to buy at today, right? So that's what we're doing here is that we already know what's the maximum profit uh, if we buy at tomorrow, right? Because we're going from the bottom to up approach. So what we can do is that we know, you know, we know that Currently, if we were to buy at today's stock, and what's the maximum profit if I buy at today's stock, right? I need to know is is it is it going to be greater than you know what we you know if we were to start buying tomorrow or should we buy today, right? So in this case, we will get what's the maximum profit. This will give us what's the maximum profit if we were to start buying at the current position, and at the end, this is what we're going to return at the end, right? The maximum profit if I were to start buying at the first day, okay, or in this case start buying, uh, or uh, buy start at day one, right? I can when I say start at, I can buy at day one, I can buy at day two. I want to know what's the maximum profit, right? If I start buying at day one, right? In this case, start buying day one, I can buy at day two, day three, so so on and so forth, right? So this will basically bring the time complexity. Uh, the time complexity is still going to be n square, but you can see the space complexity is, uh, uh, in this case, we're not using recurrent stacks, right? Um, and then you can see we're still using a one directional array. So in this case, the space complexity will be linear, right? And the time complexity will be n square.